In this versus series, we take a look at two greats of basketball history as we analyze their skills, achievements, and career totals, ending with a conclusion on who is the greater basketball player overall. Today, our matchup is the big fundamental, Tim Duncan, versus the Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant. One legend built his legacy over a long-lasting career of 19 seasons with the San Antonio Spurs, while the other played 20 seasons with the Los Angeles Lakers. Two men who each have an argument of being the greatest player of their era. When you're comparing a shooting guard against a power forward or center, then the means in which you compare the two have to change. For example, it's normal for a guard to average more assists than a big man because of how much time the guard spends handling the ball, and he also does more of his passing from the perimeter, which is where most of the facilitating takes place. On the other hand, it's normal for a big man to average more rebounds, considering his size and where he positions himself on the court. So what this means is that having categories like rebounding and playmaking would be pretty ridiculous considering the obvious advantages that are built into the different positions. So in this video, we need more general categories, and these are the four I've chosen for this comparison. Offense, Defense, Playoffs, and Accolades. First off, Offense. Fundamentally, these two players have an extremely different approach on the offensive end, as Duncan was more of the type to play within the flow of the offense. He didn't have to be the leading scorer to be extremely effective on his team. Kobe, on the other hand, had a much more aggressive tendency and even personality, and their differences showed on the court. Tim Duncan is currently in 15th place on the all-time scoring list with over 26,000 points, and he averaged 19 points per game over the course of his career on 55.1 true shooting percentage. Kobe is in 4th place on the all-time scoring list with nearly 34,000 points, and he averaged 25 points per game on 55% true shooting percentage, and he also won 2 scoring titles. When you simply look at their field goal percentage, Duncan had the advantage, which is expected from a big man. But when you take the other aspects into account, like perimeter shooting and free throw shooting, Kobe now has almost the exact same true shooting percentage as Duncan, despite the fact that he shot the ball nearly 50% more often than Duncan did. Analytics have proven that as you shoot the ball more, efficiency generally goes down, as more shot attempts means being less selective and results in taking more contested shots. Despite that, Kobe was a lot more efficient than people generally give him credit for, which is pretty incredible considering the fact that he took a lot of what Paul George would call bad shots. Duncan was never the dynamic scorer that Kobe was, but he didn't have to be, and that was somewhat the beauty of Tim Duncan's game, as he could fit with many different offenses and with many different personalities. These two were so uniquely different in the way they approached the game. I could break this category down for an hour, looking at all the different angles and perspectives, but for me, at the end of the day, Kobe has to take the offensive category, as he's one of the most dominant scorers of NBA history, and believe it or not, he was also an underrated passer. Of the players who scored at least 25,000 points in their career, the only players who accumulated more assists than Kobe did was Oscar Robertson and LeBron James. That's it. Offense goes to Kobe. Second up is defense. Both of these legends were two of the greatest defenders at their position. Neither player won a Defensive Player of the Year award, but they were both consistently elite and earned many All-Defense Team selections. Duncan has 15 All-Defense Team selections, which is the most in NBA history. For his career, he averaged 0.7 steals and 2.2 blocks. Kobe has 12 All-Defense Team selections and 9 First Team selections, which is tied with Michael Jordan, Gary Payton, and Kevin Garnett for the most First Team selections in NBA history. He averaged 1.4 steals and 0.5 blocks over the course of his career. Duncan in many ways was the model of consistency, and the biggest example of that was probably his defense, as he's the only player to make the All-NBA and All-Defense team for 13 straight seasons. Even as Duncan aged, and his reliability as a strong offensive threat dwindled, still his elite defensive presence remained. He wasn't the most athletically gifted player, but he had an incredibly high defensive IQ, and was a great team leader for a defensive-minded team. Duncan finished 5th on the all-time list in block shots, putting himself in the debate for the title of greatest rim protector to never win the Defensive Player of the Year. Now Kobe was elite too, especially in his early years in Los Angeles, and ask anyone on the 2008 Redeem team and they'll tell you about how Kobe's defensive tenacity, dedication, commitment, and leadership led that team to be as suffocating defensively as they could be. It was remarkable how throughout the majority of Kobe's career that he could use so much energy on offense while also remaining the best defender at his position. In 2006, Kobe became the only player to officially average over 35 points per game while also making first team all defense. 
He wasn't the type to lead the league in steals or blocks, but where he really stood out was with his on-ball defense, as Kobe was great at trapping his opponent, causing turnovers, and just generally making the offensive player frustrated, especially when Kobe put his mind to it in the most crucial situations. The thing is, Kobe didn't have the defensive longevity that Tim Duncan had. Even though the Mamba made 12 all-defense teams, which is just three short of Tim Duncan's total, even that 12 total is a bit questionable for Kobe. In an interview, the all-time great and brutally honest Phil Jackson said that Kobe won some of his later all-defense team selections because of his reputation, and not necessarily because of what he was actually doing on the court. In other words, Kobe's own Hall of Fame head coach said that his defense was a bit overrated, at least in terms of the later years of his career. As someone who personally witnessed more games from Kobe than any other player, I have to agree with this statement. As Kobe aged, it became much more common for him to get blown by by the offensive player and simply rely on the center or the help defender to bail him out. It wasn't that Kobe couldn't still be great defensively, it was just that he picked his spots rather than being a lockdown force all game long. Also consider the fact that Phil Jackson made this comment in 2010 and implied that this reputation thing had been going on with Kobe for a bit. So when did this reputation thing start? 2008? 2009? When you look at it that way, you're talking about around 8 seasons of Kobe's career where he was not one of the best defenders. The same thing can't be said about the big fundamental. A slight edge on defense goes to Tim Duncan. Third up is the playoffs. When you're comparing some of the greatest players of all time, you have to factor in the postseason, as the game completely changes, and the pressure, the nerves, and the magnitude of the moment reveal what players are really made of. Tim Duncan led the playoffs in total points two times, in blocks three times, and in rebounds six times. Over his 251 games in the playoffs, he averaged 20.6 points, 11.4 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2.3 blocks on 54.8 true shooting percentage. Kobe led the playoffs in total points four times and in steals two times. In his 220 playoff games, he averaged 25.6 points, 5.1 rebounds, 4.7 assists, and 1.7 steals on 54.1 true shooting percentage. Both players had postseason careers that were packed full with iconic moments. Both players had five championship rings, but when it comes to playoff comparisons, it's not really about the stats that drive the debate, but it's usually the narratives about the players. For example, people often criticize Kobe for quote, getting carried by Shaq to his first three championships. But as I've talked about in several videos before, that's because Shaq took advantage of the mismatches in the NBA Finals against the Eastern Conference. If we're being honest, the NBA champions were decided in the Western Conference playoffs in the early 2000s, and in two out of those three championship runs, it was Kobe who was arguably the MVP of the West playoffs, and in both 2001 and 2002, where Kobe's Lakers defeated Tim Duncan's Spurs, Kobe was the best performer for Los Angeles. Now some argue that Tim Duncan's final championship in 2014 was more as a role player than the best player on the court, and considering the fact that he was 37 and Kawhi Leonard was the finals MVP, there may be some validity to that claim. But as far as the best performance in an NBA Finals series, that definitely goes to Duncan in 2003, who put up absolutely ridiculous numbers in those six games against New Jersey, including a near quadruple double in the championship clinching game. In my opinion, Kobe's most impressive championship run came in 2010, where it wasn't so much about his solid playoff numbers, but it was more about the fact that he did it with a broken index finger on his shooting hand. These guys have so many postseason minutes that you can find instances where both guys played above expectations and below expectations. You can stir up any narrative to discredit either contender, but there's always a narrative-based counterargument against the other player as well. In my opinion, both guys had equally impressive stats and achievements when the games mattered most. Playoffs is a tie between these two legends. Last on the list of categories is accolades, and both of these icons had a ton of them. Duncan was a 5-time NBA champion and he won 3 finals MVPs. He was a 15-time All-Star, made 15 All-NBA teams, 15 All-Defense teams, and was a 2-time league MVP. In his 19 seasons, he averaged 19 points, 10.8 rebounds, 3 assists, 0.7 steals, and 2.2 blocks on 55.1 true shooting percentage. Kobe was a 5-time champion and he won 2 finals MVPs. He made 18 All-Star teams, 15 All-NBA teams, and 12 All-Defense teams. He was the 2008 League MVP and he won 2 scoring titles. 
in his 20 seasons, he averaged 25 points, 5.2 rebounds, 4.7 assists, 1.4 steals, and 0.5 blocks on 55 true shooting percentage. Ultimately, as usual in these videos, it's extremely close, and I don't think there's a wrong answer here, but just a matter of opinion and preference. But for me, Kobe Bryant is the greater basketball player and ranks higher on my all-time list. To boil it down as simply as possible, Kobe was simply the more dynamic and dominant offensive force, and to me, the advantage Kobe has over Duncan offensively is significantly greater than the advantage Duncan has over Kobe defensively. I do think there's a strong argument for Duncan, but if you make that argument, then I think it's mostly about stuff that goes beyond the stat sheet. For example, he was a quiet and humble leader who led by example. He's a teammate who's incredibly easy to get along with, which certainly isn't something that Kobe was known for. And Duncan sacrificed money on several occasions to allow his team to recruit more talent. Now I'm not one to suggest that any worker should take less money than what they're worth, but at the same time, Duncan's willingness to sacrifice some of his own potential income for the sake of the team just goes to show how his selflessness and team-first approach was so instrumental in all of the success that San Antonio experienced. So to reiterate, I think Kobe is literally the better basketball player. But if we're talking about who is the person you would rather have in the organization for everything they bring to the organization on and off the court, then Tim Duncan is likely the right choice. Let me know in the comments section who you think was the better player and who you would rather start your franchise with. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content and I'll see you guys in the next video.